Well, they say first impressions last a lifetime. We'll see if that's true, shall we? Hey guys, how are you all doing? Just a quick video this week to recap some of the stuff that I had purchased and used in last week's video at Burren Point. Uh, the purpose of me buying uh, the stuff is to A, upgrade, add extra as family members are wanting to start coming along with me. So let's jump into it. First on the list is this baby. And I have to say, I'm absolutely loving it so far. And that is the One Tigress, or Black Orca, Tippy Nova. It goes up easy, it packs down easy, uh, it's light. Uh, one Tigress on the website say that it's about 1.5 kilos. I threw it on my scales and it come up more around the 1,050 grams, just under. I have thrown a few extra pegs and guidelines in just in case it's a great tent there's plenty of room in it for two people of my size and i'm 183 centimeters tall and and i am uh, 100 <laughs> kilos so i'm not a little guy um, so i'll be very interested in doing a full review on this when i finish my uh, cool little great walk so the Tippy Nova by One Tigress has my thumbs up. I am finding that because I'm used to polyester nylons, they're a lot heavier, a lot thicker, and probably a lot more, I'd say a lot more durable. I am finding it getting used to the thinner 20D uh, ripstop nylon uh, a little different to get used to. I'm treading around on tippy toes and laying feathers down everywhere I walk because <laughs> I'm worried about going through it but it seems tough it uh, it tightens down well uh, none of the uh, tie down points are coming loose or seem to be pulling uh, open uh, any stitching so so that's a good thing um, it seems quite well made it's a budget friendly tent I think this one cost me a hundred and ninety one dollars uh, after the exchange rate and that was buying direct from One Tigress, their website. I think you can buy them for about $1.99 through Amazon sellers. Um, but yeah, budget, light, and so far, roomy, quite durable. Like I said, we'll see in a week's time when I do a full review of this. Second on the list is a sleeping mat, the Asti Vita. It says Australia on the package. I don't think it's made there. Uh, I bought this on Amazon. It's about $35 Australian. The reason I bought it was as a spare um, sleeping mat. I have my Cedar Summit ultralight insulated mat, which is a very, very good mat. But as I said earlier, I'm 183 centimeters tall and I have a reasonable girth the problem with the Cedar Summit mat um, is that it is only 183 centimetres tall and it is only like 50 something, 52 centimetres wide. So it is a narrow mat and it's a mummy shaped mat. The reason I bought Asti Vida is it's 193 centimetres tall and 60 centimetres wide. It does give a little bit more room the other night when i used it i had a lot more room on it so far so good i was worried about the r value of the mat um, i did send a question away to the seller asking for that unfortunately i never received a reply i think that's pretty bad guys whoever sells these on amazon that's pretty bad you always answer questions from your customers I bought it anyway. I was surprised at Burham Point when I camped the other day. Well, it was predicted to be six degrees. It got down below that, uh, and I never felt any cold come through. So I'd say as a two-season 
Matt, here in Queensland, you bet definitely a three season. Matt, um, it went quite well, it performed quite well. It was quite comfortable, not as supportive and as comfortable as the uh, my Cedar Summit, Matt, but then again, you know, you're comparing $180 to $35. The only thing I didn't like about it really is the fact that you do have to blow it up by mouth. Um, now, you could probably buy a battery operator pump or a pumps, universal pump sack that would fit it. I was hoping my Cedar Summit pump sack would fit it, but it didn't, unfortunately. So I did blow it up by mouth, and you find that usually on a colder night, if you blow a mat up by mouth, you'll lose a bit of air pressure uh, during the night um, as temperatures change and air pressure inside the mat changes. So that's the only downside, really. Other than that, I think it's going to be a pretty good little mat. It's, um, I think it's about 500 grams. So it's not overly heavy, and I think my Cedar Summit comes in at 470, so there's not a lot of difference. So yeah, I'm going to take that away with me on the Cool Great Walk. I'm going to use that one um, and uh, do a full review on that when I get back. So that's that one. Third on the list is the new gas stove. This was $24.95 on Amazon. I primarily bought it for one reason, well, a couple of reasons. I wanted something a little bit smaller. First up, I thought, going by the photos, it looked a lot smaller than what it was. It's actually quite bulky and reasonably heavy, so I dud it out there. The second reason I bought it Let's get it out of the box. Is this little adapter here? Now that screws on to the end. That allows me to use my cheap and nasty couple of dollar canisters compared to the more expensive flat canisters. Unfortunately, that as far as the fun went. I didn't have a lot of issues where others said on the reviews the plastic ignition melted. But guys, I wouldn't recommend this stove. Now, I don't know the brand. It just come up gas stove, hiking stove, cooking stove. But I wouldn't recommend it. Um, save yourself $25. And that's first impressions. I used this over the weekend at Burham Point. Every time I went to try and turn it off, it flared up. It Every time you tried to adjust it, it would flare up. This would be deadly if you were in inclement weather and had to use this in your tent. I've used different canisters on it since I've got home. It does the same thing. It is a nightmare. So I will be sticking to my little homemade metho stove. I'm only boiling water while I'm away, so it will be fine for that. The on Amazon hiking stove slash cooking stove slash whatever stove, it's a dud. No. One of the other things I've been put onto, I was put onto by the wonderful guys on the Facebook page of Take a Hike South East Queensland. I have been suffering blisters and mainly due to chemotherapy making my feet and extremities sensitive. We are getting some rain. And so in search of a curing or prevention or treatment of blisters, I went to the hiking page and I got inundated with a lot of support and help and that was great and one of the things I got was these things in gingy toe sock liners now I've been wearing these on my daily walks 
I am having a lot less hassle with sore feet and blisters. These things are working a bloody treat. Um, I got these from wildfiresports.com.au. They were $18.95 a pair. So they're not cheap, but in saying that, Wildfire Sports were a lot cheaper. They're normally about $24, $25 a pair. They are worth having. I actually think that um, they would be worth having um, even bike packing or bike touring. I think they would support your feet, they keep your friction uh, between your toes down as you can see they're toed socks so they your toe fits into them like a little glove and that stops your toes rubbing together which in turn stops the blisters. I was using some compression socks uh, but I found that that compressed my feet too tightly um, whilst it helped circulation in the lower calf and through the ankle and that it, it didn't help the toes much so I've just gone to some normal socks and uh, these guys and I am finding my blisters are becoming no more. Now I'm just about to finish the video, the rain stops. Wow, Murphy's Law isn't it? <laughs> well anyway guys, that's this week's video. Like I said, just a quick one. I head off uh, next Tuesday to head down to Gympie and then onto Rainbow Beach and then on to the Kulula Great Walk next Wednesday, the 9th of September. And so this is my first multi-day hike. I am a little nervous. I haven't done this before, but then again too, you know, I was nervous the first time I ever did bike touring. Uh, so it comes with the territory, I suppose. My concern is my fitness because of the chemo it does leave me lacking, but it's at the end of my cycle when I get my energy levels back and so I'll be taking my time stopping every um, few kilometres for photo opportunities and I'll even take the drone I think it's about time I started using that bloody thing I bought it ages ago well, anyway guys I'm going to leave it there stop rambling and uh, let you get back to what you were doing cheers and keep it safe out there eh